check out what is better, the Canon M50 or the X-T200? Right there, I don't know if you see that right there. Which camera is better? You guys be the judge, and I'm gonna go outside, check these out, but I think the Fuji has it. What do you think? Hey everyone, what's up? This is Gilson Vergara. Comment down below what you guys think of the setup because uh, I honestly need a newer space while I'm trying to reinvent myself. Something came in the mail yesterday and I wanted to present it to you and do a quick review on it and tell me what you guys think. These are, one is a established camera, one is an upcoming camera. So I wanted to see what your guys' thoughts were as a beginner type of vlogger, uh, YouTuber, content creator, whatever you want to call people like me and the rest of the like 43 million people pushing out content and for someone who's a layman like me there's only one thing I'm really looking for maybe two one that it can capture really good audio through external mics and provide good image and maybe a three convenience because it's not easy setting up a shot trying to catch the moment so those are my top three things as far as trying to build a really good setup for yourself so you can vlog every day as well as produce content but still have a budget in mind that's pretty much it so if you are new to the channel please consider subscribing and this is going to be produced on both of my channels because i'm only going to be putting reviews up uh, like a product review on Aduma life only if it can benefit other filipinos as well as other expats living there when they want to capture moments in their life you know with camera quality capturing moments in the philippines whether it be video or image and things like that so today i present to you this this is the vlogger setup right here i don't know if you can see that comes with a road mic and everything i'm gonna break it down i don't really think i need to unbox this but i am going to show you the contents of the box the links are going to be low if you're interested in it this one's going to go to my nephew right he's going to be slowly paying me back because he's a bright shining star he wants to be here's his here's his channel right here i decided to hook him up but build some type of responsibility in him if you're listening to this anthony build some type of responsibility into him where he's paying me back for this particular camera so let's open up the contents of it yeah let's do it what do you get in this box so this first big box here, okay, it's an actual unit. Let me throw it to the side here. Here is the actual camera right here. So the vlog kit comes with 32 uh, gig memory card, right over there, 32 gig memory card, and the actual Rode mic. I'll also be reviewing the audio quality with this Rode mic compared to the Rode Video Micro. Don't need any batteries, so really, really good. So you're not wasting, you're not really always worrying about is it gonna cut out or whatever. The, this uses the camera's power, which is really good. Um, everyone's very familiar with this right here. Let me look more into the box as to what's inside the box. So you get the Canon strap. My nephew probably won't be using this. You get a wall charger, which is, um, if I wanted to get a wall charger for the Fuji, I would have to purchase it. And obviously I'm gonna probably do like a two battery capacity type thing, just so you know, alternating battery. The starter lens, the lens that can Put you in the game as my nephew says he's in the game now so this is the 15 to 45 millimeter lens it has stabilization right there the starter lens of the fuji right there the kit lens also 15 to 45 and uh, 15 45 as well on this one so i'm gonna set this all up and then go outside do my thing and you guys be the judge of that without getting into the mumbo jumbo of it all the all the details of it this is a dual pixel camera. It's a legend of a camera. Many people use it for many different reasons, vlogging. Um, some people use it as their A camera and as well as a webcam. I've seen people do this as a webcam as well. So this particular camera has been tried and tested as a proven camera for versatile uh, purposes. Here's the actual camera right here. Very similar to in size to the Fuji. Um, let me do a side by side here of just the body alone. So let's get right into it. Size wise, this is the Canon right here. And this is the Fuji right here. You can't really see it right now, but they're pretty much hand in hand, like the same size, I think right there. What do you guys think? They're pretty much the same size. 
this does have more buttons and you know knobs and everything this is pretty simple right here i gotta give it to them on that one right there they both have viewfinders right there they both have viewfinders They're both articulating screens as you can see both articulating screens pretty cool weight wise pretty the same they're pretty much the same um they're both plastic so they're both they're both considered entry-level mirrorless cameras so that's something for you to consider biggest reason why i bought the xc200 was because it did win in a few things based on other reviews so that's why i chose that however this is a legend of a camera that people have been using for a very long time so i'm gonna do a quick test on it things that are probably more applicable to a vlogger i would think uh hand wise this has a better grip to be honest with you this one i feel like i still want to get in there more it's pretty short the grip here this right here amazing just super tight on it right now like like it feels ergonomically feels a lot better to be honest with you um i do like this that it's all matte black has a black all black situation there the buttons feel very sturdy even though this is plastic it does feel very sturdy i've never played with this camera but i'm gonna put it on auto i mean movie mode and try to get the same exact setting so it's a fair fight pretty much with this and you guys be the judge of that so let me put this camera together i could not turn this on because the battery it had no battery this is the setup right here essentially i'm gonna put my man frodo on here so so you can see the setup i'm gonna go outside with right now so this is a setup versus my joby right there i don't know if you see that right there so i just realized right now another cool thing about this camera maybe only with because of this man frodo look at the base right here so small you can actually take out the battery and put in the sd card freely and you know for for those of you like look at that look at that space dude for those of you who are you know long time vloggers people are on this all the time you know how big of a headache it is to actually change the batteries out you know while on these cameras and stuff like that so i just wanted to mention that i don't know if it means anything to you fuji film xt200 versus the canon m50 which camera is better you guys be the judge and i'm gonna go outside check these out enjoy the video hey everyone so i don't know if this is catching it Right now on 4K on the Canon F, on the Canon M50, and I wanted to see if the audio is getting picked up and everything like that. But as you can see, 4K for the Canon M50, I'm pretty cropped in. Um, I don't know how the audio is coming in or not like that, like I said, but just um, check it out. What do you guys think as to the, um, the if there any blur back there? But yeah, this is um, this is me right now. How much image? How much image am I gonna? Am I really getting? As you can see, I'm walking around. This is at 4K once again. 30. This is 4K at 24 FPS of 23.98. But tell me what you guys think. Like, um, good, bad, whatever. Me personally, I don't really like it with this particular lens. I know there's a 16 millimeter and a 10 millimeter. 10 to 22 that will probably give you the look you want but for this particular kit lens is not my favorite right now so and the screen is a lot it seems a lot smaller than the fuji so i don't want to i want i don't want to be i don't want to sound biased but you know at the present moment i don't really like the look of it as you can as you can see i'll walk around how's the stabilization here when i'm walking around i don't want to land and step on any dog mines but yeah but tracking it is tracking me colors look very very nice let me see if i can find something that we can focus on it all auto focuses so here boom okay pretty good back to face okay boom hide my face and okay okay now i'm not gonna see it until post edit however i just wanted to show you this is at 4k it's a bit cropped in for me let's switch over to 1080p 
and see if there's a very big difference. Now, this is um, 1080p at 30 FPS, close to 30 FPS. As you can see, way more stuff. And I do see some type of separation there. And this is kind of like my low light test as well. So this that's where the outside of the light is. And this is the inside, which I do see the separation. It looks pretty good. I'm, just, I'm sorry if I'm looking at the screen. The color science on this Canon, I have to say is very, very good. I, I mean, this is 1080p right now. Looks very, very good. Let's go outside. So let's run. Ooh. Now, this is pretty much on an amateur thing. Everything's on auto, ISO's on auto, and everything's on auto. So let me just get this so I can prepare for my test here. So this is 1080p. This is more realistic to the 15 millimeter. Wide open right here. I mean, this is the, the this is, I can see this compared to the, Fuji, you can see just as much information. I don't know about separation or uh, depth of field. However, let's test it out. Let's walk a little bit faster. I'm just gonna check the audio and everything. This is like basically you just buying this camera and just getting it out of the box and putting everything out, not playing with the settings, putting on everything on auto. Tell me what you guys think. Test right here. Okay, good. Okay, I'm gonna put the timer on it later, but right there. And good. Boom, walking, focus, and back. So on 1080p, I do like. The 4K, a bit too cropped in for me. A bit too cropped in, honestly. Um, just not my gig, not my thing. I'm gonna do the 4K and the 1080p on the, the Fuji as well, to give you a good perspective. So, this is the Canon M50 on 4, 4, 4K 23.98, basically 24. But as you can see, it's super cropped in. You don't get that much information, I was, uh, but detail is very good. I'm looking at the screen right now. Image is very good, detail is very good, but it's not the look I want with this particular lens. Don't get me wrong, putting a Sigma lens on here, other glass on here, you're gonna achieve it. But out of the box, this 4K is cropped in for me. I'm gonna switch it over to, so this is more of a low light test as well. So for me to get the look I want on 4K, I would literally have to poke it out pretty far. And uh, I, it's, just, it's just not practical, it's just not. Um, let me switch over to 1080p. Now for me, this feels more like at home, more like the images that Fuji was giving me. It still looks beautiful. Canon, the Canon science and everything like that, very, very good. I mean, it's it's amazing. Like uh, the way I'm looking at it right now, it's amazing. I I particularly like it. Uh, th this this is ideal. You know, this is this is what it's good for. However, it just it's not in 4K. That's the biggest issue here. So this is uh, 1080p at uh, 23.98. You be the judge. For me, with a naked eye, they look pretty much the same because I'm just looking at colors, depth of field, and how much information I can put on the screen that you can see. So you guys be the judge of this. What do you guys think? Comment down below. Hey everyone, so this is like a low light test. I'm gonna turn off this, um, this slide I have to the right of me, but this is the Fuji. Let me know what you guys think as far as I, once again, I have to reiterate, this is like out of the box settings, put in movie mode, ready to shoot, somebody who doesn't really know nothing about ISO, uh, shutter speed and all that stuff, this is just straight out of the box, right, like I want to make a vlog, there you go, this is the Fujifilm one, and tell me what you guys think, how was the, uh, I see good variation back there, I really do, on my end, and low light for me, this camera's always done very, very well in low light for me, um, now this is at 4K24, this is 4K24, and I'll switch it over to 1080, um, 30, and you guys uh, let me know what the difference is. There's going to be a subtle difference, you probably won't even really see it, but I'm just going to show it just to display it anyway. So once again, this is the Fuji film. tell me what you guys think, tell me what you guys think on the audio, and everything like that. Okay, so now this is the Fuji, tell me what you guys think. 
Concerning the color, I have to give it to Canon, honestly. I do seem a bit washed out on here, and I'm not going to edit any of the... I'm not going to grade any of the footage, but... This does, for some reason, seem as if it's letting a little bit more light in. And, it, and, it, and the aperture right now is everything's on auto. So, for those of you who want like a, a lot brighter screen, not as dramatic, I mean, for me at least, maybe this is for you. The Canon gives me more of a more cinematic feel. I don't know what you guys think, but that's how I feel when I'm looking at this screen right now. Like... There is a good depth of field there and everything like that. Let me see. There, yeah. Well, technically, I, I have big pores, so... And you can see mine's. <laughs> but, um... I would have to give it to... I mean, autofocus and everything. For some reason, this this does let... It seems as if it's getting more light in to the, to the picture. At, but at the same time... I seem, it looks as if I'm a bit more washed out. If that makes any sense to everyone compared to the Canon when I first looked at it. So you guys be the judge of that because this is from my perspective. Um, I still love my Fujifilm, to be honest with you. I still, I still do love it. But you guys be the judge of that. Yeah. And tell me what you guys think. Um, color, depth of feel once again. How it's handling the light and everything like that. What do you guys think? Is it adjust really quick? Okay. Let's go take a walk outside. We'll do like a, um, the same uh, test. So this is 1080. Tell me what you guys think. I'm just going to walk around stability wise. I'm going to just pull this up for now. So tell me what you guys think. Clean, clear, depth of field and all that mess. What do you guys think about it? Like, um, like it don't like it so let's do a test of auto focusing so right there right in front of you okay super quick back to the face i'll put a timer on it maybe super quick product and boom so that's that that's at 1080 let's switch over to 4k now this is at 4k 23.98 now as you can see totally not cropped as you can still catch everything there um, I hope those there's good depth of field color looks decent it looks pretty good for me right color is good and I'm just walking around right not cropped in this is the biggest this was my biggest de decision maker as to why I got this camera and not the M50 because of this because I want to do in 4k to be in the algorithm and everything, you know, to, you know, it's a runner in 4K, and let's test the autofocus. Quick, okay, and boom, super quick. Okay, cool, very good. Is it focusing? How fast is it going to focus? Okay. So in conclusion, what is my choice? What, more importantly, what is your choice? I personally like both cameras, honestly, to be honest with you. Each one of them has its gives and takes, pros and cons. I personally prefer the Fuji because it's uncropped at 4K. I like that part of it. However, I do like the, the friendly usability factor of the Canon because if um if you guys are familiar with this with this Fuji the buttons are super good they're super like like shallow not shallow but like you gotta really dig into them right dig into them that's like one of my biggest things with with this Fuji on and off right there they stick out enough where you can press them they're tactile see with this right here right the this record button even the on and off button sometimes you gotta really press it down for it to shut down that's the only thing i don't really like about this but the screen articulating screen the wideness 16 by 9 very very good the record button sometimes you don't even know if you're recording you have to really go down on it for some reason that's something that fuji should take care of in the next in the next version of this maybe the xt 300 or whatever the my biggest thing 
was because image quality canon has this color science so it looks really good fuji has it as well I, i'm starting to like it but it's not as rich as canon for me spec for spec they're they're really good cameras either way especially if you change out the glass and everything like that I think you'll be really good. But for someone who's just starting, like myself to a degree, I don't think you can go wrong either one, but if you're into 4K uncropped, I think the Fuji is a lot better for that. They're both touchscreen, still amazing for me, right? Still amazing. The functionality when it comes to the menu, I'm starting to get used to this because it's super simple, very singular. You know, you have three buttons here. There, you have the options and stuff like that. So it's really up to you. I'm not that picky. If you know how to work a phone, you know how to work these to a degree, if it's on all, all on auto. But for those of you like me who are kind of like creeping into intermediate, I usually shoot in aperture mode and I play with the, with the ISO, I play with the shutter speed and I, and I, and I customize the, at the f-stop. So, but that's super basic because there's a particular look I want, you know, the depth of field and all that stuff. I keep saying that the depth of field, I'm sorry. You cannot go wrong with either or. And microphone wise, it's Rode, you know, they're, they're great. Like if I bought this first, I wouldn't really have any, you know, regrets not buying this and vice versa. But for me, I want to try something new. Maybe that's your case as well. But the biggest deciding factor on why I didn't buy this was because of the 4K um, crop. It's super cropped in, honestly, it really is. It's just, it's not for me. You know what I'm saying? It's not for me. Uh, I, I can shoot in 1080, anybody can. That's a topic of contention. If you want to shoot 4K and that's your thing, like me, then this is the way to go, honestly. I know there's a Mark II. I don't know if they fixed this issue in Mark II. This Canon is still a great camera. But for me, this is a sick camera. Yeah, so that's just me. Okay, take care, bye.